Coming up on this episode of DL Weekly, it was a rough week for the resort with power outages, technology issues, and an unfortunate fire during Fantasmic. The Oogie Boogie Bash is returning. DVC Villas are going on sale. We talk about the past and future of Fantasmic and more. DL Weekly starts now. Howdy, partners. For your safety, remain seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast. And be sure to watch your ears. If any of you folks are wearing hats or glasses, best remove them, because Tag and Teresa have the wildest ride in the wilderness. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of DL Weekly for the week of April 26th, 2023. I'm Tag Bushman. And I'm Teresa Urban. A big thank you to Knox W for becoming an official weekly tier on our Patreon. Our supporters get some pretty fun perks like DL Weekly swag, bonus content, and access to our Discord community. A special thank you to Bryn W, Janie M, Chris L, and Matt L for your continued support. If you would like some more Disney magic in your day, head on over to dlweekly.net slash support to join. Well, our next trip to the parks is this coming week. Days away. Days We're away. leaving on Sunday. Sunday. So we will be hosting a weekly tier meetup as we tend to do. Please join the hosts, producers, because they're going to be with us this time too, and they other are. weekly tiers on Sunday, April 30th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Of course, we're going to be at the Earl of Sandwich in downtown Disney. Come by and say hi. Even if you only have a minute to come by and yes. just say hi, please do. It's always a great fun. We'll have some swag that we give out to folks and uh, just kind of hanging out and having a good time. Mm-hmm. Well, if you are not able to make it to our meetup, have no fear. Our public live stream and our Patreon supporter hangout is this week on Sunday as well. So April 30th at 3 p.m. Disneyland time for our Patreon hangout and 345 for our public live stream. The live stream will be well, both of these events will be live from Anaheim. The public live stream, of course, will be on our YouTube page, which you can find at YouTube.com slash DL Weekly. Now let's get to the news. Well, among the most shocking news that we have covered here on the podcast happened this last weekend. At the 10.30 p.m. showing of Fantasmic on Saturday, there was a malfunction with the system that the dragon in the finale, lovingly referred to as Murphy, which caused the dragon to catch fire and was close to, if not a complete loss of the animatronic. No cast members or guests were injured, but some were treated for smoke inhalation. No official word from Disney on when the show will return or what they will plan to do with the damaged dragon. We will talk more about this during during our discussion topic later on in the show. As you can imagine, and as I'm sure most of you, Tag and I were both like, this hit really, really hard. And this was, I mean, heartbreaking. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, we're so glad that no cast members and nobody was hurt. We do, you know, we do feel for those that were treated for smoke inhalation because that is serious. But we're just very glad that no, no people were hurt. But we're just devastated that our beloved animatronic dragon's gone. And again, we'll talk more on this because we have a lot to say. So stick around for the discussion topic. Well, it just wasn't a good week for Disneyland Resort. On Thursday, April 20th, the system that that is used to allow guests to enter the parks crashed. Additionally, magic bands were also non-functional. The system was down for about an hour. Just not a good week for Disneyland. There was also, I didn't, we don't have it in the news, but the other thing that happened was there was also a power outage for the west side of the park uh, as well. So it was just, there were some gremlins or something going on. But uh, yeah, so I saw pictures. It was only down for about an hour, thankfully, but I did see pictures that, you know, a ton of people were in the Esplanade waiting to get in. I was say, an hour is a very long time when you've got people trying to get into the parks. I th- I had read that they were trying to help the flow of things from the parking garages and not, you know, shuffling so many people down to the parks on the trams. Mm-hmm. The parking garages were having to hand out paper parking tickets that they were handwriting on. It was just, it was just wild. And I, I feel bad for all of those that were stuck in the Esplanade, kind of in limbo, waiting to see what was going on. I also feel for the cast members that were, I'm sure, feeling very panicked and very had a lot of pressure on them to try and figure out what was going on, because I imagine there was a lot of unhappy guests oh, yeah. right on the other side of those turnstiles from them. But it's just interesting, because you, when issues like this happen, it just kind of makes you think, what, you know, what else could have been done? You know, what, what, you know, plan B kind of a thing. We used to have 
Magic Keys, for example, used to have physical cards. Yep. Would a phys, you know, could they have done something different if there was a physical card, or is that would that still have been the same system? Same thing with physical tickets. You know, d- does that make any difference? Does that? I don't know. It's it's one of those things that you just wonder with how much we rely on technology. What's what's the backup plan for when technology fails? It certainly sucks when it doesn't work. That's for sure. I did see some people reporting on social media Saturday, like. Don't leave the park. You won't be able to get back in and all of this stuff. So I do feel like that time in the morning between like 1130 and 1230 when this was happening, that that's kind of towards the end of the morning rush of but people you can coming park in. But man. Hop starting at 11, though. Oh, yeah. So that's even crazier. Yeah, that that's yeah, because park hopping starts at 11 now, not one. So that's probably why there was a bigger influx. Do you would think Disney or a company as big as Disney and a resort as big as Disneyland would have like backup systems they could fail over to? But apparently not. But uh, may, maybe that's something that they're going to work on. Now. I'm sure they do. But this I mean, because think of how frequently, you know, those systems are getting day in, used day in, day out. Sure. And this is the only time I know that this has been this big of an impact. Sure. So it's just, it's wild though. Well, in happier news, Disney has announced some things for the 2023 Halloween time at the Disneyland Resort. First, the Oogie Boogie Bash is returning to Disney California Adventure on select nights this fall. Of course, none of the dates have been announced yet. Second, Mickey and Minnie have their costumes picked out already. The new costumes are orange and green made out of a luminescent sheer fabric that will give them a ghostly glow. Okay, first and foremost, yay, Oogie Boogie Bash. However, I mean, we're either, are either, of a surprise it's going no, back. No, but it just makes you feel better to know when it's officially announced because then you can just, you know, kind of breathe a sigh of relief sure. just in case. I think it would be crazy for them to not continue Oogie Boogie Bash with how amazing and how popular it is. Definitely. But very excited. I was disappointed. I was hoping for dates, right? Mm-hmm. I need to start planning my Oogie Boogie Bash trip out to the parks. Whether or not we did that, I don't know, but at least gives us an idea of what to expect. What do you think of the costumes? I like them. I think they're cool. I was surprised because I feel like with a lot of these type of things, I feel that in general, I don't don't know about the past, but I feel like they usually pick one kind of style and that's kind of the style, but now they're changing them up annually. That's what I was feeling too. I was like, I don't, maybe I'm having a bad memory. I don't remember their Halloween or their holiday time outfits changing annually but th- recently they've been they've been getting new clothes each season sure. and i i'm here for it i like it now one thing they didn't announce i mean of course we'll have more details as oogie boogie bash nears but they didn't announce anything like new character meet and greets this year because or anything we didn't have yet. any little te- maybe we'll have some teasers later i want to go back to the costumes though okay can you we are talk on the costumes they're so cute look okay so mickey it's got this fun top hat it almost looks like it might be a little bit see-through kind of kind of ghostly almost if you will that might just be the coloring on the concept art but i'm gonna i'm well, gonna pretend that, way, that it might be a little it. it might be a little you know a loom like you know see-through there he's got a nice orange coat with it looks like a kind of see-through cape in that same kind of tealish color of his hat i am sad that it seems like they've gone away from purple this year because purple and black are usually like the two colors and they've gone with this green and orange go go to dca there's lots of purple in dca (laughs) that's true tons and tons of purple but he's got a bat bow tie I just love it. And I like his vest. I like the like swirl pattern on his vest. He's got a swirly and, like, a pocket watch pocket too. Pocket watch too. And then Minnie, Minnie's got her bow is orange, but it's got this really big bat in the middle center of her bow. And her dress has all these different bats all over it with these kind of fun, flowy, see-through orange sleeves. And then look at her shoes. You can almost not quite make it out in the concept art, but her shoes have like bats on the toes too she's got Very a lot fun. of bats going on Lots that's of for bats. sure i like it i, I so think cute. it's neat i hope that they continue changing up the outfits and everything as time goes on so i'm glad that they announced it i'm excited to hear about dates i know that they announced dates for disney world's party mm-hmm. so i was kind of like well what, what, what? but keep in mind disney world's parties start in like mid-august yes, they start super early. early so maybe that's the reasoning there We'll we'll go with that for now, yes. (laughs) Well, another unofficial day is happening at Disneyland this Thursday, April 27th. 
Disney Nurses Day will hold its second annual event themed to Frontierland at Disneyland. In future years, this event will be themed to a different land and will move to Disney California Adventure. We have, of course, a link in our show notes to the official Nurses Day itinerary. Yeah, they have quite a few things on here. So uh, starting on Wednesday, they have a Trader Sam's Fireplace Meetup, which we know very well because we've done meetups there. It's a great spot for it. So that is at six o'clock on the 26th Wednesday. So if you're listening to this podcast late, you've probably already missed this. But Thursday, April 27th, starting at 7 a.m. at the Disneyland Hotel, they have a rose garden where you can meet up and pick up some swag and stuff like that. And then they're going to be at Disneyland. There's a Magic Happens Parade viewing. There's a Wondrous Journeys uh, watch thing. There's a group ride on the Mark Twain. How fun. Lunch at the Hungry Bear and a group photo op in front of the castle at 1130. Super, super fun. If you would like to learn more, be sure to follow the Disneyland Nurse at Instagram and Disney Nurse Day on social media. Well, Disney Vacation Club members are going to want to hear this. The new villas at the Disneyland Hotel will go on sale to existing members on May 2nd with public sales opening on May 30th. The resort itself will open on September 28th. The Duo Studios are themed to The Jungle Book. The Deluxe Studios are themed to Sleeping Beauty or Princess and the Frog. And the one and two bedroom villas are themed to Princess and the Frog or Fantasia. Multi-level grand suites feature theming from Bambi, Frozen, and Moana. You know, just when I think my Disney bucket list could not possibly get any more longer, full, however you want to say it, stuff like this happens. These rooms look gorgeous. I don't think it's quite enough for me to become a DVC member, but <laughs> I do think I, I feel like I need to like stay in one of these rooms at some point in my life. It was always I like bucket list item to stay at the Disneyland Hotel. That one's now been checked off thanks to the wedding. Sure. But now now I see these rooms. I'm like, oh my gosh, they just look, they look gorgeous. I just I can't wait for people to be able to experience them. I just the theming is just very well done. Very well done. So yay. Congrats to all the DVC members listening because you guys are getting a beautiful new tower and you get to start making your reservations very soon. DVC members can also enjoy a break from the sun and the crowds in the brand new Star View Station in Tomorrowland. The new DVC lounge opened this week in the upper section of the Star Wars launch bay. The location features plenty of seating, free Wi-Fi charging station, as well as free soft drinks. I mean, free soft drinks. This area looks really cool. There's a bunch of uh, people who were able to go. Uh, our friend Philander on Instagram mm-hmm. did kind of a tour of it and posted a bunch of photos. I think it's really well themed. Yes. Um, I'm, you know, I guess I'm a, I'm a little sad because I'm not a DVC member and I can't really go and experience this, but they should, this is what a magic key lounge should be like. Mm-hmm. This is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the theming, the carpeting, just the atmosphere, everything about it just is, is great. So the thing that I find super cool is they have all these really fun nods to old school Tomorrowland. They've got like murals on the wall that represent the Mary Blair mural, the original Mary Blair murals. You know, they're it's representing been tragically that. covered up. Gorgeous. But on display, they also have the original Tomorrowland Spaceman costume. And it's like on loan from the Disney archives. I think that is so, so cool. I don't know why, but I'm really surprised that they still have that. It's to like be a honest. it's like a lounge slash museum almost in a way. There's a lot of history that they put into this. If you have a chance, please go check out our friend Philander on Instagram because he did a really really good deep dive of all the different nods and all the different mm-hmm. like hidden hidden Disney things and I mean, not so hidden, some of them, but he he did a really nice explanation and deep dive on all the cool stuff in this lounge. I think they just did a really nice job on this lounge. I think they did, too. I did, totally. When they first announced this, I didn't have very high hopes, but I think it I think reality is way cooler than. Oh, yeah. Than what what the concept seemed like to me. The one cool thing is it we did read someone correct us if we're wrong, but did look like if you are not a DVC member yourself, if you have a friend that is a DVC member, they can bring up to five guests with them to the lounge. So if you, like us, are not DVC members and are interested in maybe checking this out, talk to any of your DVC, you know, maybe you can get invited by a member to give this place a a view. Very, very cool. I think it's totally worth it. And I didn't think, 
I didn't know that was a thing. I think that's a pretty cool perk that DVC members can bring guests with them. Because could you like, I think that'd be weird if you went to the park with friends and you wanted to go, I don't know, recharge in the lounge for a little bit. You know, well, think about Instead this. Instead of splitting the group, you can usually a with family you. I think that's buys really cool. a DVC membership. Like, it's, sure. you know, so if. So, yeah. So there'd be one member yeah, for the it's family. Not like, that's true. It's not like if you and Vern bought a DVC membership that you both would have a membership. It would just. Yeah. So I think that's nice. And that makes sense. Well, May the 4th is just around the corner and some new treats have appeared in Galaxy's Edge. Over at Katsaka's Kettle, a new Jakuin corn chili and cheese pie has arrived for $6.79, along with a peaches and cream chilled white tea for $6.49. The cheese pie is made with roasted poblano pepper, corn, and mozzarella and served with a citrus dipping sauce. The tea is a white peach tea with a cream cheese topper and basil crystals. These are I'm going to say you're both. all about the drinks. These are both happening. These both sound so delicious to me. Galaxy's Edge just knocking it out with all of the fun. cool. Like, I don't know if we've been disappointed by many things that Galaxy's Edge has to offer. I in even, terms of food, for sure. Yeah, yeah, in terms of food. I even think this trip I might have to give blue milk a go again. Um, it was a long, I kind of have forgotten what the blue and green milk tastes like. It's been that long since I've tried them. But 100%, I am trying this peaches and cream chilled white tea along with a Jakuin ch- corn chili and cheese pie. Yum, yum, yum. Do either of these sound The The fun peach to you? thing does sound good. What I was trying to pull up here was I wanted to ask you a question because I can't remember something and i wanted you to jog my memory because you remember this stuff better than i do but the the peach thing sounds really good i'm I'm a little concerned about the cheese thing just because but i think i can do poblano peppers because i think we make stuff at home with poblano and it's not too spicy spicy. yeah because i just worry about it being spicy Mm. but otherwise totally there for it i'm really interested in trying the the peach thing Mm -hmm. i like peach i'm just wondering like how peach is it going to be that's the question the question I had for you, Teresa, though, is not the milk stand, not Oga's. What's the, where do you get the? The kettle? Cos- Ronto oh. Roasters. Oh. Did I try this? Eric from Concierge had this. And I was like, I think I've had that. The the Destrian yes. ice cap. Did I like it? I think I liked it, yes. didn't I? Yes, you wanted to get it. You wanted to get a second one. I think you did get a second one during. Wasn't the problem though that like she said, don't stir it, and the first thing I did was stir it, so it, it like, like exploded yes, everywhere. Fizzed everywhere. Okay, because mm-hmm. I want to have this again because I saw Eric's picture of it, and I'm like, that looks like my mouth was watering looking at it <laughs> we we need to write down our f- our like food lists again for this trip because we always go into it thinking oh we want to get this we want to get that we want this we, we want forget. that and then we get there and we don't remember and then or we buy the same crap we or, always get or we yeah we buy some other stuff and then we remember and then we're like well now we're not like now we're too full or you know whatever so well the exciting we need to we need to write this down this time is if we want to eat stuff, we have Vern That's, and, who yes. will eat everything. So if we're if we just want like a bite of something or whatever, Vern's like, give it to me because he's like the least picky eater that I know. <laughs> he's like, if it's edible, I'll eat it. Oh, he, so. Yes, he is. It's all the running. It's all the running. <laughs> so are you um, so you want both of these? You said I'm trying both. Yes. Gotcha. Well, Downtown Disney has a new location to grab brunch between 9 and 2 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Naples will be offering this new dining option soon. No menu has been posted as of the recording of this episode. So I really liked Naples. Uh, However, I will say the last time that we went to Naples, I thought that their pricing had gone quite, quite a bit up. That was we haven't been there. That was when we went for D23 in 2019. Yeah, but still. <laughs> it's been a while since we've been but to still. Naples. Uh, they did have a picture of this, supposedly one of it's the like, things that they're going to have. It's like is avocado, avocado toast. toast mixed with caprese. It looks good because it's got like some balsamic mm-hmm. on it. It's got some mozzarella. Mm, that looks good. Yeah. So I'm interested to see when they when they have the. In fact, while I I want to see if I'm looking at the menus, if they've posted it since I wrote this. I'm really curious. Yeah. To me, Naples if I were to say another location in downtown Disney was offering brunch, Naples probably would not have been the first location to have come to mind because I just sure. think of them as having more, you know, lunch dinner type food since it's, you know, Italian foods and pizzas and all that stuff. I don't it doesn't I don't think breakfast when I think it. So I'm really curious to see what this menu is going to look like. We're going to have to wait a little bit longer to find out. Yeah. 
Well, a new eatery has recently opened in downtown Disney. Clyde's Hot Chicken has opened a booth in the shopping district selling chicken skewers. Clyde's is known for their traditional hot chicken, among other menu items. Other locations include Fullerton, Montclair, Santa Ana, Placentia, and... Las Vegas. So, Tegan, I have a confession to make. When oh, we geez. first saw that this location was coming, we both assumed that it would be a like either a quick service kind of spot or maybe would have some seating. Like you know, a full restaurant. Something along the lines of what Earl of Sandwich had been, where you kind sure. you go in and there's but you don't necessarily sit. It's not table service. But it's also not just a, a one of the little booth sets. I think more of like snack foods. So we were both really surprised to find out that this opened as one of those little more like snack booths because those booths have what what do we have? we've got like churros? There's corn dogs. It's more of like the grab and go stuff. So we were a little surprised by that. But I I do like that we're getting more offerings and more options in downtown Disney. That I am excited for. Yeah, I just it showed up on one of the mice chat articles we were looking at. I was like, oh, it's a it's a booth. Yeah. I, it, OK. And there's skewers. Now, the review that mice chat had was that they didn't think they thought the flavor and everything was mm -hmm. good. But the the sticks, there's a there's a hot stick combo, which is a five chi piece chicken stick with chips and pickles was fourteen dollars. But just the stick by itself was twelve dollars. So and then to add sauces was a dollar a piece. So I was thinking, OK, that. That does seem fairly pricey for like and, five pieces of chicken. Mm -hmm. And it's and by pieces of chicken, it's think more along the lines Nuggets. of like, yeah, or like chicken tenders maybe cut in, in half or something. Yeah. They're not they're not like it's not we're not talking plaza in pieces of chicken sizes. Correct. No, <laughs> not not a whole it, it chicken. It does breast. look tasty though. It does, but I don't know about the price, that's mm -hmm. all. DL Weekly announces the boarding of the Trivia Express. Non-stop star speeder service to the moon of Endor. All passengers, please prepare for immediate boarding. Hello and welcome to Trivia Land. Hope you are having a wonderful time. We uh, have a little less trivia this week than last week. Yes. But not every week gets to be spectacular, right? Also know for listeners, we will not have trivia next week because we're going to be it's going to be a shorter report from the park another trivia note too before we get in fully mm. into trivia land is we wanted to amend last week's trivia we talked about one of the questions was what was the first animated film first animated disney film to get a pg rating by the way we got more feedback about this than Lots we've ever gotten feedback, about anything but very kind feedback everybody that let us know so thank you all for pointing that out but you fans were correct the incorrect answer was i think we said it was tangled was the answer that was given we were all wrong <laughs> yes however it the correct answer was the black cauldron which i want to say was 89 which when we should have we should have as soon the first email known. the first email or the first instagram message that i got as soon as i read that I just went, yes, like that. <laughs> that's the one. Like, 85. It, oh, 85. So we don't get I was more wrong. emails. Yep, I was wrong. So 1985, The Black Cauldron was the first Disney animated film to earn a PG rating. Which doesn't surprise me because when it's very dark. We've It's come up a couple times on The Hub Crawl as like a scary movie. And so oh, yeah. I would have thought like, okay, I've never seen it. Do I, I need to see it? So you haven't seen it? Are you surprised by I, this? I mean, that's true. Exactly. Okay, I'm weird. This was like, I watched this movie more often than I probably should have as I was growing up. Because it's it's dark. It's scary. But there's some really lovable characters in it. It's just the Horned King is really a pretty Okay, yeah, I don't know me. anything about this it's, movie. Yeah, you, you you need to give it a watch at least once. But Okay, I will add it to my Disney Plus watch list. You can watch it on the plane as we fly out to to California this next week. All right. So I'm sorry, producer James, we have hijacked you. Please that's, continue. That's okay. The poor black cauldron, often forgotten. Yes. This is why we pride ourselves on saying we're a Disney Parks podcast. And when we leave our lane, we get in trouble. <laughs> but anyway, that's why we're going back to park questions this week. So my first question for you is, there's a train of interest campus that if it's lucky to gain superpowers... It'll share an origin story with what superhero? The Hulk. The Hulk. I love this tree. <laughs> it's the Hulk it is tree. Such a Disney detail, though, is it not? Like it is. it's just perfection. Perfection. 
Anyway, our second question this week, it's an audio clue. And honestly, I wasn't confident in your confidence in that first question. So I tried to give you something easier. So uh, you're welcome. Here you go. What attraction? What attraction is it? That would be Pirates of the Caribbean. It's tough because I think it's Pirates of the Caribbean. It's not Fantasmic, right? Because I feel like they use the same audio clips in Fantasmic. I, I will tell you this is not from Fantasmic. Okay. It's from Pirates of the Caribbean. I was going to say, as soon as you said, oh, that's tough. I w- huh? Well, <laughs> because it could have been from Fantasmic. Yes, like, it could have been yep, yep, tricky. Yep. I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. That's a great idea for future clues, though. Thank you. Good job. Good job, <laughs> I mean... That's an unpive hive, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that I'm sounds. I'm taking away your five five. It's oh, like five. that. <laughs> this is a high five. This is an unhigh five. <laughs> what a podcast experience this is becoming. <laughs> I don't know if that picked up on the microphone I told you not. there was... there was. You, what did you put in dinner? What did I put We're in... We're all the, losing the, our apparently minds. Apparently the... The, whatever secret ingredient the breakfast oh, potatoes oh have. i want to mention this on the podcast <laughs> Teresa for dinner tonight made what do you call it uh, well i just called it a sheet pan hey we got to use these things up before we go on vacation dinner. so it had potatoes and it had some um, sausage it had some peppers it had some onions and some seasoning which Teresa doesn't know what it was because Vern just spattered some seasoning I can get on it. the seasoning I know what seasonings they were and I just I don't said, know the measurements this is almost <laughs> the famous breakfast potatoes <laughs> both both James and I just like put our forks down and stared at him like what it tasted <laughs> it was the closest thing that I have tasted to the breakfast potatoes since the breakfast potatoes <laughs> The only thing that was bad was it didn't have like that it hard. It, the texture wasn't right, but the flavor was great. <laughs> Just need to be a little crispier. And what? And, and James, what did you say to Teresa? Well, how do you want your hundred bucks? <laughs> <laughs> My accidental hundred dollar. Anyway, yeah. sorry, James. Please continue. No, this this is great. I, I'm <laughs> loving the insanity of trivia land tonight. <laughs> I just just wait till we get to oh man if we're just trying to get all the happy emotions out because we know we're going to oh, a sad sure. place after this yeah, all right well using that segue uh third question in what attraction can you find a parody of the mona lisa in what attraction mm. can you find a parody of the mona lisa is, is it no no muppet vision doesn't I, exist anymore or i thought vision. it was in i thought it had been in Goofy's house, but I don't think Goofy's I don't, house. Yeah, I think since the refresh of Tomorrowland, I don't or Tomorrowland. <laughs> since the refresh of Toontown, they took some of the. I thought there was something about Goofy. I thought there was something in Goofy's house. Those dreams of a Tomorrowland refresh coming out. Yeah. All, all I can, all for some reason, the only thing that's sticking in my head right now is the Mona Lisa with Miss Piggy. As the Mona Lisa, and I that that image cannot get out of my head. So I'm like, oh, maybe the haunted mansion. Nope, that was that was Muppets haunted mansion. <laughs> that I'm thinking of something like that. So I have poisoned the well of my knowledge of this question. Yeah, I'm gonna because it's still existing, right, James? Uh, as far as I know, yes. Okay, so it can't be Muppet Vision because that doesn't exist anymore. We, I'm gonna we go... will check for sure when uh, we're there. I'm gonna go. The only thing I can think of is Goofy's Goofy's house. But I don't think I don't know if it's there with the refresh because now it's like a candy factory inside of his house. Hmm. Yeah, I got nothing other than that. Yep. I mean, let let's be honest. It is a shame that the Muppets are woefully underrepresented in the park. Oh yes, a amazing Disney property. Yeah. Yep. All right. Your final question for this week: Name the fortune tellers in Disneyland Park. Oh, oh, dang it, Esmeralda. What's the chick's name on Main Street? Tilly. Tilly. She's in a fortune teller. She's just the mm, ticket taker at the true. Main Street Theater. There's that pirate guy. I don't know his name. Yeah, pirate guy. And then- Where's Esmeralda? She's on Main Street. She's at the Penny Arcade. There's a genie one, right? Isn't that in, that, in Adventureland? In Adventureland. I don't know the name of it, though. That should be the only places wait, that wait, have wait, them, right? Wait, 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 wait. There is one in Adventureland. Mm, it's not. There's the genie. Not the shop. There's, mm, we're terrible at this. I'm going to say, okay, Esmeralda, <laughs> pirate guy. We're grieving, Teresa. It's okay. <laughs> Who? Okay, what are you going with? Are you Did I talk you out of Tilly? 
I'm just going to say Tilly. I don't know Tilly. the other people. It is Tilly, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is, but she's, I don't think she's a fortune teller. I think no, she's but she's that same kind of creepy, realistic thing that's like yes. similar to what they put in. Pirate guy, and then there's a lamp in in the Adventureland Bazaar, but I don't know. I don't know the pirate guy's name, and I don't know the the lamp. I feel like there is something else in the Adventureland Bazaar that's an actual like station, but I don't remember what the character is. Part of me thinks it's a shrunken head, but I feel like... Oh, it might have been a shrunken head. That I don't know if it's still there, though. Mm. Lamp and shrunken head. Ned! Ned. We're going to say shrunken, shrunken head, head Ned. Ned. That's, that's... Wasn't that from Harry Potter? I don't know. Wasn't that the dude that was on the night bus? His name is not Ned. Oh, okay. I just remember him talking to the driver. I don't remember. Oh, sure. That's the wrong studio tag. This we're I know. Not... <laughs> we're not proficient on that studio. Mem- remember, we are not a movie movie podcast. Yeah. All right, James. I think we've we've tapped that well. Great. Well, can you see into the future like... Esmeralda, the pirate guy, or shrunken head Ned, or Tilly. Don't or, forget Tilly. Or, or Tilly, who's Tilly. not even a, a not even one of them. <laughs> Ooh, maybe they know how well you did at Trivia Land, but for everyone else, we have to wait to find out until after our discussion topic. Well, for our discussion topic this week, because of the events that happened at Disneyland recently with the Fantastic Show, we thought we would kind of re-go back and talk a little bit about some of the history of Fantasmic and lead up to today. And then we have some we have some eulogies from our supporters in our Discord chat and from each other for our from ourselves here about Murphy. So where where does this all start, Teresa? Well, I think we need to start before the beginning. Before um, the beginning. Before the beginning when we talk about Fantasmic. So the thing that's really incredible that a lot of people may not know is Fantasmic feels like it's been around forever and ever and ever, but it really, in the history of Disneyland, hasn't been, a. I mean, it's been around for a while, yes, but not not as long as some may think. Like, all of my memories of the park include Fantasmic and its various versions, but that's, you know, again, those are my memories. Those are just when I visited, but in the grand scheme of things, it hadn't been there very long. We found some really great articles, of course, links in our show notes, so you can see all these amazing photos for yourselves. But we have photos of the construction on the Rivers of America pre fantasmic because, shocker, the island and the setup as we know it today it didn't exist prior to Fantasmic. So the old mill and that stage area 100% exists for this show and was built special for the show Fantasmic. In fact, they completely drained the Rivers of America back in the early 90s in preparation for this show. And uh, we were talking about it used to be dirt. Then they actually paved the basin of the river for the show and installed all sorts of cool stuff. So again, really neat photos that we have to share with you. Links are in the show notes if you'd like to look at for yourselves. We were also just looking at this before we started recording the discussion topic part of the show this week. And some of these photos are kind of shocking compared to Disneyland that we know of today. For instance, w- the first thing I noticed was it wasn't as busy as it is nowadays, yes. which I think nobody yeah. would be surprised to see. However, there were some photos here where there are entire sections of what now would be behind construction walls that Very were just kind tall, of yeah. open. Very tall construction walls, too. This It's almost like the construction of this. Yes, there was you know a wall in between the main walkway and the drained rivers of America. But there were side parts like over by like as you're going towards the mansion, that side of the river that just had like low little fences that just you could very easy it seemed like it was easier to see in it's whereas, those barriers i feel like they put out where they're like touching paint up on yes, something yes yes whereas now i'm thinking back to when they were redoing the pirates of the caribbean queue they you could there was not even a crack in yep. any of those construction walls just to get like the slightest little glimpse they have it sealed up tight so well it's, it's just amazing the you know difference in time yes. right? because back then folks didn't have cameras in their phones People didn't have social media where they were kind of sharing all this behind the scenes stuff. So it's just it's really interesting how things have changed over the years as far as how much more secretive Disney is about stuff that they're working on. There were some photos that we have linked in the show notes of things that I honestly had never seen photos of and didn't even know happened. Like, so one of the first photos I saw was the Mark Twain was sitting at that bend in the river that's basically like where and this was right around where Splash Mountain is just 
sitting there, not in, not at the dock or anything, just kind of, just kind of sitting on the ground. And then there's a picture later on that they did the Mark Twain refurbishment right there in the riverbed. And you could see it from the area by Hungry Bear, which is amazing. Like, you, mm-hmm. they don't show any of this stuff anymore. There's a truck parked next to the Mark Twain in the dried riverbed. There's, is that a, is that maybe a dumpster? That's a dumpster. In the middle of the dry riverbed. It's just wild. It's really, really cool. So highly encourage, if you have the time, please check these photos out if you're one of those behind the scenes <laughs> Disney nerds like we are. It it's was just, a it different just, time. Well, and it just makes, <laughs> look, seeing it, seeing it in this like beginning construction stage to what it is and looks like now it's amazing to me Mm -hmm. somehow this doesn't take away any magic for me no it actually somehow makes it more magical to know how deep the river really isn't and all that sort of thing it's just (laughs) like how you worded that how deep the river really isn't just you have this 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 thing it's kind of like me with the haunted mansion where i think i fully know that the entire attraction is not within the facade that looks like the the creepy house that we see as you know from the outside but my brain thinks for sure I'm in that exact same yep. building it's wild speaking of the haunted mansion when they were planning so they they knew that they wanted to do some sort of show so again we're in the pre pre phantasmic time and we're in the blue sky planning process they knew they wanted to do this show something and they weren't sure what to do one of the concepts that had emerged was a show based around characters from none other than the Haunted Mansion and the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. We could have had happy haunts entertaining us in the evening or swat- more swashbuckling pirates hmm. entertaining us. I just thought that was interesting. But there was something else that they were talking about where it was built up around Fantasia. And the thought included a live orchestra floating on a barge. But eventually, the concept of Mickey battling All sorts of Disney villains combined with moments from famous animated features was the one that won out. And what we now know today as Fantasmic was born. However, fun fact, originally the show was called Imagination. It was not actually called Fantasmic when they first were designing the show. Which explains why in the music he goes, Imagination. Lots, yes, lots of imagination references. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I thought that was just wild. I love the promotional artwork from back in the day, too, that shows a really spectacular dragon that, spoiler alert, before we had Murphy, was not as spectacular as in the promos for the mm-hmm. show either. It was pretty bare bones. It was it was the equivalent of like a a, a boom it's, with it's, like a yeah, dragon head on the you, end of it. If you've seen Fantasmic in Walt Disney World, their current dragon was very much like what the original dragon was for Disneyland's version mm-hmm. of Fantasmic. So like we mentioned, construction did begin on Fantasmic in 1991. The rivers were drained. Tom Sawyer Island was expanded and they installed all the new show's infrastructure. Some of the infrastructure included computer control rooms, backstage areas, fun things like larger than life Pinocchio marionettes, and mm-hmm. of course, the dragon, which, like Tag mentioned, was basically Maleficent Dragon 1.0 was, yeah, just the dragon's head <laughs> on top of like a cherry picker. But it was still, it was pretty good, a sight to behold. And again, think about the time of when they came up with this. Pretty amazing. But all in all, in the end, it's estimated that the show costs around $30 million to build, construct, create, put on all that stuff. And that was way back in 1992. Yeah. And at that time was more typical the price it was to build an entire attraction. So the fact that they invested that much into a show, I mean, it paid off because this show is, I was, I feel like this, it's just so ingrained and is just such a part of Disney land DNA that I can't, I can't think of Disneyland without Fantasmic. That's how much the show is part of the, is part of it. Yeah. I was trying to explain to someone at work today, we had some professional development and we were kind of in doing some group work and I was trying to explain how good Fantastic was. I said, look, this show came out in 1992 and I still consider it the best nighttime Mm -hmm. entertainment Mm -hmm. that the park still has 31 years later. Yeah. Now, they've updated it a little bit, but I would say the core of the show has remained pretty much the same since the beginning. And I'll tell you, one of the things I love about Fantasmic so much, I know we're talking a little bit about the history, but one of the things I love so much about it, the very first time I saw the show in person as a small kid 
was it's just there's so many things that you don't expect from it, right? So you think mm-hmm. you any type of show, if you've never seen it, this is going to be not mean anything probably to you. But if you've seen it, you know what I mean is during the day. And we've talked about this a lot during the day. You would not know that a show yep. happens there. As the night progresses, light towers come up. The The stage transforms on the end of Tom's Island. All of this infrastructure for this show comes out of seemingly nowhere. It's very mm-hmm. Disney magic. Mm-hmm. And then when I first saw the show as a kid, there were so many things that I did not expect. There's barges that come out that have the princesses on them. There's fire effects. There's fireworks. The Mark Twain is part of it. The Columbia is part of it. Like all of these things, even when it was a cherry picker dragon, it was amazing that this thing was not there a second ago and it yeah, is there it, now. Oof, there it is. Then they set the river on fire. Mm-hmm. As a kid, I would never in a million years have even conceived that it was possible to set water on fire. As an adult, I'm still just in awe and amazed and have this need to always be sure that we see Fantasmic when we're there, when it's playing. I was very sad and of course you know not not it, it just is what it was but part of my ideal disneyland wedding was to end my day watching phantasmic with everybody however mm. phantasmic was not playing yet again so that didn't happen but that was like the one like if there was anything quote unquote missing that would have like been the ultimate that's how much the show which is just mm-hmm. so, like you said it's just everything about it is just is just pure Disney magic. And I think that's why the show's so important and why it's lasted the test of time as long as it has. So anyway, so like Tag mentioned, it did debut in 1992. The press preview was May 13th. However, the official opening day to the public was on May 15th. And of course, the show was a smashing success. Crowds flocked to the park in record numbers. And that original show, because we're going to talk about the different the, the different changes throughout the years, but that original show featured, of course, full-scale Peter Pan versus the Pirates battle. There was all sorts of groups, all sorts of different characters on the Mark Twain Riverboat, which those have changed kind of throughout time too, depending on, you know, what's new and different characters get get added. I think that's really fun. Something that you it's it's always changing, but you may not notice those changes because they're just they're small changes. There was a giant inflatable Ursula. Oh, I missed that. And then of course the fire breathing dragon maleficent finale at the end. And then like like I said, there were very large Mary Pinocchio marionettes. Mm-hmm. Of course we had Ka and we had King Louie and the princesses and their princesses. Peter Pan princesses which... and their princes i know they're never coming back but man who and the tiktok the crocodile following Mm -hmm. the boat i loved i loved that i thought that was wonderful so yes i mean it was wonderful so i didn't know this actually we probably covered this when we covered this we covered the full history previously on episode 49 so if you want to go way back to episode 49 you can hear us talk about some of that we're going to kind of speed up just a little bit i think here but originally apparently the plans that called for the show to be refreshed every five years Mm -hmm. uh, but it did see some updates over the years. So technological upgrades, of course, in the late 2000s, which culminated in the big 2009 refurbishment, which obviously brought Murphy Mm -hmm. in her up to recently current splendor. Yes, yes. I do want to touch on Ursula, though, because Ursula is kind of one of those interesting. I never got to I never got to experience Ursula. So Ursula is one of those things that if she wasn't around really that long. So she did have some issues of course there were hiccups and the inflate she so ursula was an inflatable on a barge that they'd drive down and through and around the river but she actually it kept it kept breaking down and she was retired for good in 1997 there were also this i this is really really like sad for me to say this there were issues with the reliability of the fire effects that were used for the original maleficent dragon and the biggest thing that they probably didn't know that they needed to plan for was crowd control issues oh yeah they had it was it was such a popular show and it was such a it, it like just a caused such a yes <laughs> and it caused such a you know such a bottleneck because the bank the banks of the river were not designed to handle the massive crowds because people wait hours to be oh, able yep. to see this show. Yeah, I remember until they started doing fast passes and stuff like that, that people literally you'd pass there at like two in the afternoon and people would already have like blankets out waiting for it. But 
man, I, uh, it's uh, it's just such an amazing show. The the cool thing though, and this was the uh, the version I remember. So okay. when Ursula was retired, she was replaced with she was then a projection on the yep. miss screens, but they replaced her physical figure with flotsam and jetsam her two electric eel pets and they they must have been on it must have been on jet skis those guys were so cool i don't know and those came if i could make the most perfect version of phantasmic for me would include flotsam and jetsam again i thought they were amazing it would include the peter pan scene purely because i loved the tiktok figure that followed the boat i thought i just Mm -hmm. all of the physical characters and physical effects of this show are what make it so magical the the miss screens they're a nice addition but i don't want i don't want them to be the main focus if that makes sense and the 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 strength of phantasmic is that it's kind of a lot of things right Mm -hmm. that you have the projection screens you have the characters you have the boats you have all of these things you have the fireworks and the fire and the mist screens and the lasers it's i feel like disney was like what are all of the things we could put in a show let's put them all in this show and it's it's a spectacle so when when ursula by the way the reason that the ursula scene is so long in the original version is because they needed time to get ursula from one side of the river to the other because she came out like the boats and stuff do and like made her way around so that takes time which is why her section is pretty long but then i i do miss that because it was spectacular it was huge Mm -hmm. she moved her arms around a little bit it was kind of her eyes glowed Mm -hmm. i also liked tiktok a lot when and tiktok hung around until they replaced that scene yeah until the pirates took until pirates Pirates of the caribbean took over yeah now some of you may not know this but uh or under or or know the history here but the reason that we refer to the dragon as murphy the most current dragon the most current dragon is because when when the maleficent animatronic dragon premiered in 2009 there was all types of problems so everybody referred to as murphy as uh, as along with you know like the old murphy's law of anything that can go wrong will go wrong mm-hmm. because when she got installed everything was a problem she, yeah she had a rough go of it the the animatronic dragon prior to her i just learned this in doing this deep type but that animatronics nickname was bucky because oh. it had two large teeth in front and that was <laughs> like buck teeth yeah like like yeah and and that was part of the fire effect was the 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 spark would go between these oh. oversized teeth so that's why those teeth were a little bit more oversized because it was the the spark for the fire effect or whatever oh. yeah link in the show notes for all this behind the scenes stuff that we read but we found i th- we found these really great articles of this guy that was at the part like it's he it's him talking about his memories of the experience and some of his photos he shared photos from the the souvenir guidebook that was available for the premiere of phantasmic all sorts of really cool stuff i was just actually reading and he was talking about how you know there was so much anticipation for this and when the construction walls came down for the rivers of america it was a little bit maddening for guests because once the river was filled back up and the walls came down it looked so good that it kind of looked like they well, didn't do what anything. did they do you know like they were so there was maddening and they were just like i don't understand what took so long here but then of course when everybody saw the show and they saw all of the different underwater jets and all the different lighting all the different things that they had done that then kind of came out at night then it was kind of like oh <laughs> so i just thought that was interesting yeah i mean i don't know i just I have a hard time talking about the history of it because I just keep thinking to myself how amazing of a show it, it is. is. It is super, super amazing. Especially for being 31 years mm-hmm. old that this mm-hmm. happened in the 90s. I want to say when she first premiered or maybe it was when the 2017 refurbish thing happened. I want to say that she used to like move more. And then I think that to try to stem some of the issues that they that they kind of limited the movement. Cause I remember like, didn't she used to like rock back and forth a little bit and her head went down a little bit more. Cause this seems like a lot further down than it ended up being in the most recent couple oh, of. Yeah. I, I, I felt like she'd almost be like darn near like eye to eye with. Me. Yeah. So now we're going to kind of transition and just focus more on 
the Maleficent Dragon, the 2009 version, which we lovingly refer to as Murphy. So I... Created by Garner Holt Productions. Yes. So yeah, it was actually Garner Holt Productions that made Murphy and all of her amazingness. But the thing that, you know, you have to remember, she's been performing since 2009. Yep. So, and two shows a night. Maybe three. Yep. At least... We for sure every weekend and then during the summer every you know every single night. So this she has put in a lot of time at mm-hmm. the parks. So the thing that I try and keep you know kind of remembering and reminding myself is as horrible and tragic and sad as it was that this incident happened. Really, it's amazing that something maybe like this didn't happen before because like the odd like. I don't know the odds I mean, of you know what I mean like anytime you're much, shooting fire out yeah, of something but I mean but but how often it was happening too it was sure. happening multiple multiple times anyways but she I just there's something about her she's just incredible honestly hands down my favorite part of all of Fantasmic is Murphy and it oh, always yes. has been I remember joking with James at Concierge about we I think he had helped us book Fantasmic dining packages and I was like Murphy's got like Murphy's got to come out. Murphy, like I just am in awe of her. She is just incredible. She stands at forty five feet tall. And the thing that's really cool is we've kind of been doing some more research and seeing more things about her. But I did not realize until recently, and we can share a, sh- a, a photo of this for those of you that are interested. But magic spoiler: she actually, yes, she lives in a cave in a cavern underneath the stage which to me is like also amazing, just yep. amazing i would have like wanted to pay money to get a backstage tour to like go down into this cavern to see where murphy lives yep. but the thing that's incredible and i never never even wrapped my head around it was how she fits down there i just assumed this cave down there was as tall as murphy was plus a little bit taller obviously, me too so she get down there Oh, but no, Murphy was a girl of many talents. She somehow was able, she was able to kind of tuck her head. So her neck would go back, would retract down into her body. So then she would lose, you know, however many feet. And her horns would also fold back. And yes, and her horns folded back too. Yeah. Um, Amazing. So that that area about where her shoulders are, if you go up just a little bit from that, just above that is where the base of Murphy kind of ends and the rest of it, uh, the rest of her collapses inside of that, which honestly, until Incredible. this whole thing happened and we saw some photos in doing some research, I did not know that. The, no. I was like you. I thought the whole thing just I, went yep, down into the ground. The, I thought there was this really, really deep cave too. that she lived in under there. That's that. Was, now, again, Disney magic. That's just how my brain like why my brain didn't even think, oh, she probably you know yeah so consolidates so here's a couple things we didn't we haven't mentioned yet i think it's important so for those of you who might find this traumatic this is maybe where you skip ahead to the trivia answers because now we're going to get a little sad talking about kind of what happened so disneyland has they released a statement that they are investigating they're starting an investigation as to what caused this but let me just paint the picture for you if you haven't so by some miracle, I haven't seen the video of this on the internet because I kind of, you know, full full disclosure, I feel like I've kind of been scarred by this in a weird way, and that's not normally my personality. But seeing pictures over and over of this is kind of traumatic for me. But I'll try to explain what happened. So during the 1030 performance, so the second performance of the night on Saturday, April 22nd, the finale, Murphy showed up like she does, uh, and Mickey was on stage. And when Murphy was supposed to shoot fire out of her mouth, the liquid came out, but did not fully ignite. It kind of like half ignited, which some people, you know, in hindsight are saying that Disney maybe should have stopped the show right then because obviously something wasn't correct. But they continued the show. uh, You know, the investigation will determine what happened eventually in the future. This is just what we know now. And basically when Mickey turned to zap Maleficent or Murphy in this case, there's that section where like fireworks and stuff come out of out of Murphy's head. And that is when her head kind of ignited in fire and started uh, just just kind of was a big ball of fire. And it looks like a lot of the flammable material was falling out of her mouth and dripping down onto her body, which caused her body to ignite. 
and basically devolved into a giant fireball on stage. Mm -hmm. Guests were evacuated from the area. Cast members were evacuated. Some were treated for smoke inhalation, but no cast members other than smoke inhalation were harmed or anything like that. That side of the park was kind of evacuated out of abundance of caution and safety. And they, after quite a while got the fire out yeah so from what i saw on videos it seemed like the the worst part of the fire was about 15 to 20 minutes however yeah. official word from the anaheim fire department was that they were they it was two hours once they got it fully extinguished but i i don't even know what i like if i would have been there that night during that performance, I think I would have been like a lot of people there. It seemed like from watching the videos, a lot of people were kind of a little in shock mm -hmm. when they first noticed that Murphy had was was yeah on not, fire. Yeah, was yeah was when the fire first started. I think a lot of them were in shock. If you watch there, I, there was Mickey was on stage with Murphy when this happened, when this first happened. Thankfully, Mickey was a exited the show, or the stage before it got you know bad. really really bad but watching it and seeing how big of a f like how i mean it was like it's very shocking it was it was hard to watch and the thing that's so difficult and a lot of people may not understand this yes we're disney adults yes it was just you know an inanimate character yes it wasn't you know a real person but this the murphy was such an icon of the park and it's such a big part of this super beloved show that it, it's just really difficult to watch it's i equated it to like saying to take like this is almost like it's such it's so threaded in disneyland's dna it would be like if the castle were on fire yep. or if the haunted Man, like these things that have just are just such a big part of the park that you just expect to always be there and are just so amazing and magical to see those being destroyed it's 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 tough. Yeah, a lot of people look like they were in shock and then all of a sudden this kind of big fireball went off and then, you know, people got up and exited more quickly. Of course, you did have people that were stopped and just couldn't take their eyes off of it or they were filming or, you know, whatever. So some pe the you know, cast members did have a difficult time trying to get people out of the area. They did do a, a, an, a like this. Is, the thing that's incredible is seeing the aftermath. Somehow this very large fire, the only thing visit that it looks like it really damaged was murphy itself mm -hmm. i don't un like it's amazing to me that this didn't take out more of the stage the mill or, or some take of the out stage the mill or, or take out a, a bigger space around it or you know i think about that poor mickey who was mm -hmm. right there you know that could have been devastating so in the grand scheme of things it i mean if if you were to you know it it ended up okay we just we lost you know, the only thing we lost was Murphy. Right. It's going to take a while to rebuild, though. But yeah, very difficult. Yeah. I think the other the other thing, too, like you were saying, Teresa, about being an icon is, you know, Murphy was kind of a, a you know, a technological marvel oh, just because yeah. it was such a large animatronic mm -hmm. and it was very impressive. We were just talking about how it could in the beginning, it moved a little bit more than it did towards the end, just because I think that was causing some of the problems. But it's really impressive that this giant thing that's made out of steel and all these other things was able to, first of all, come out of the stage so quickly during the show and go back so quickly mm -hmm. during the show mm -hmm. and breathe fire and do all of these different things. There were fireworks it was that came a, out of her head. It was a marvel. Mm -hmm. It would be like Rise of the Resistance burning down or something. You know what I mean? Like it's it's something that I think that people are sad that something that was so magical and kind of impossible seeming yeah. is gone. And the thing too that's, you know, kind of where do you where do they go from here? It's estimated that when Murphy was purchased, she was around ten million dollars. So she was not cheap. She was not yeah, she was not and I mean rightfully so. She's incredible. She looks like she came right off the screen. Yep. That's how realistic air quotes, realistic this cartoon animatronic dragon looked i mean just amazing she was i mean amazing if i could have like it's one of those things i had such a love for her i wanted like my picture taken with her i just loved her i loved yeah. her so much every time we walked past and if she was out i couldn't keep my eyes off her because she was just amazing i'm sure a lot of you felt the same way too it would have been really cool in hindsight if like 
after the show, they would have brought her out and lit her up on the stage so you could get pictures with her, oh, like from the shore. That would yeah, have been really yeah. cool. I know that that's part of like the Disney magic of the show is to not yeah. have that. You know we, what would have been cool? Ooh, mm. if they would have had like a villain's after hours party and, oh, and she was just out. like on the stage and just kind of like moving and being sure. her cool self. That would Ooh, be cool. That would have been super cool. So going forward, we don't really, there's no official word from Disney no. of what's happening with Fantasmic. You know, in the app, there are some available showtimes. Uh, as soon as May 5th. However, they may just be taking it a week at a time yeah. at this point. So don't plan anything about it. But obviously Murphy will not be back for that. No. That they, they do have a B mode for when Murphy does act up that is projection based. And so we'll have to see what Disney decides to do if they decide to rebuild uh, Murphy similar to what she was before or if they're going to stick with a B mode version going forward or what I just don't know what, nobody does what are your thoughts if you if you could look into your your crystal ball I for the think, future what do you think will they will do I think Disney will for the summer keep a, have a B mode because it's too popular of a show to not have and the rest of the show is still spectacular as well. So mm -hmm. there's no reason to like not have it. So I think they'll do that. And then I think they will evaluate their options. I'm not sure that Murphy would be $10 million again today because some of that money is probably research and development That's of true. building. And if Garner Hall Productions still has the blueprints and stuff, maybe they could just refabricate her and kind of install her because all of the work and stuff is there. You just have to take out the shell of the old thing and put the new put the new yeah. version in the, the other thing too is murphy's on this better. really really cool lift so there's you know part of the state you know part of the stage moves and then she rises up from from the bottom of the stage so it's kind of like you know i don't know a murphy elevator so <laughs> we don't we have no idea if that that could have been damaged we have no idea absolutely yeah. no idea there's no official word from disney as to what's been damaged and what but hasn't the next been. morning it did look like they had Gotten been able to to some. lower the bulk of her into mm -hmm. that pit but because she's damaged obviously they couldn't her, she couldn't collapse inside of herself yeah, so yeah, they the morning after for guests who like ran over there there was the skeleton of her head basically sticking out and disney worked very quickly to put up tarps and everything mm -hmm. to cover that mm -hmm. and it's it's our understanding we don't know but it's our understanding that she's still under those tarps kind yeah. of half out of the pit while they investigate what happened yeah yeah the whole thing's just it's difficult it's heartbreaking i am in this weird space that when we're there next week i don't I don't know if I can watch Fantasmic or not because mm. this is a little too a little too recent for me because honestly <laughs> this is I'm going to sound like such a like spoiled child but whenever we'd watch Fantasmic and we get to the part where Murphy was I would get nervous at the water mist scene because right the water there was always a water mist yeah. scene before she would make her appearance and so sometimes you could just tell oh no this this the mist screen has been up too long Murphy's not making an appearance and my heart would always sink because I just loved her. So the, the, the B mode, the water mist screen is, is great, but it's just, it's not her. So I, right. I think going into it fully knowing that, and that's always like, I'm always like sitting at the edge of my seat for that point. Like, Ooh, is she good? Is she coming? Is she coming? Is she, you know, is she going to yeah. make her appearance or not? You know, I think fully knowing that she won't would just, it'd be too, too, Maybe. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how I feel when we're there. If it's if it's even playing, I don't have. But also, that it's play. if it is playing when we're there, I think we do need to watch it because I think people need to. I think Disney needs to see that people like the show and they want it to continue. We should also mention that Disney did issue a statement and other similar fire mm. effects throughout all parks globally. Have, yeah, globally have been stopped. So another famous dragon that had an, a recent in incident is also the, a maleficent dragon. is the maleficent dragon in the parade at walt disney world she's still performing in the parade however there's just no fire no fire effects same thing i believe that same steampunk looking dragon i believe is in paris she's still again part of the parade just no fireworks world of mm -hmm. color currently has still running but there's no firework right or no fire effects same with the wondrous cat, yeah journeys. wondrous journeys the fireworks show the fireworks are still going but the the fireball effects yeah. that they have they are, everything is paused at this moment so if you are visiting a park in the near future fire effects right now 
most of the fire effects are put on pause. The other thing, too, people think, you know, oh, well, maybe they could just get Bucky, the original dragon, to come back. I Someone correct me if I'm wrong, because maybe maybe the internet lied to me. I'm, it, that's that, that does happen. But I don't think the infrastructure is there for it anymore. No, it's Bucky's been it's been dismantled. The head is actually <laughs> this sounds terrible. The head is actually part of the Walt Disney Archives and was actually recently on display at an archives exhibit. So it's not like they can just. See, I vaguely remember, and again, I could be wrong because we didn't get to this part of the, we didn't do this part of the research, but I, th- for some reason, thought that part of the wings and stuff came from th- from the mill house. Like, I thought the front oh. of the mill house opened, and that's where the old one came through. Probably. But with all these things, I think that that's been renovated sure. totally different, yeah, so I don't sure. think that's even possible. The other thing, too, to kind of keep in mind was the the area under the stage that Murphy lived in was also home to other big major parts of the show so there may have been like costumes i think i could be wrong but i don't know where aladdin and jasmine's carpet Mm. emerges from so there may have been damage um from either the fire itself or from the water from them extinguishing the fire that could have done you know more damage that's not obviously visible from guests just kind of looking across the river to kind of assess what damage has been done. Yeah. Oh. Well, I asked in our supporter Discord chat for some folks if they felt like they wanted to to kind of eulogize Murphy. Yeah, share their thoughts. So one of our weekly tiers, Chris, actually used to work at Disney. So mm-hmm. she has she was, some inside at the Haunted Mansion info. She said, I don't really have a eulogy for Murphy per se, but I do want to say that I'm proud of the company for supporting its cast members, working to ensure that guests and cast were safe and unharmed and for creating a safe space to talk about what happened as it's obviously deeply upsetting, not just for fans, but for cast and crew whose night shifts are in the air now. I know that yesterday Disney offered on-site counseling for New Orleans and Critter Country cast members, which I think is really great. Beyond that, there is a B-show without Murphy, so hopefully Fantasmic will be back soon until Disney figures out how to proceed. Rest in peace. Ray said, we went to Disney Archives exhibit at the Ronald Reagan Museum several years ago, and one of the pieces was the head of the former dragon, probably, Mm -hmm. from the archives. And even then, we all knew he'd earned his name. I remember standing in front of him and saying, oh, Murph, like you'd say, who's a good doggy? Just wanted it to be better for him, you know? And now this, oh, Murph. Thompson, who we actually had on the show uh, previously, said, Fantastic is my favorite nighttime spectaculars of all time. The soundtrack is awesome and pyrotechnics are amazing. But one effect that stood out to me as the best was Murphy the dragon. I have a lot of great memories watching Fantasmic and feeling the heat from Murphy's fire breath Hmm. hit my face. I will surely miss Murphy and her role in Fantasmic, but hopefully some even more advanced equipment is to come, which, you know, that we can all hope. That's true. And finally, our community manager, Kate, said, even after seeing Fantasmic many times over the years, I was never not completely awestruck at the sight of a 45-foot dragon rising up from Tom Sawyer Island and setting the water below her on fire. Murphy was absolute magic and a true example of one of the things that make Disney parks the best of the best. 100%. Couldn't have said it better. 100%. My thoughts is, yes, we're going to be entering B mode for a while because unfortunately the timing of this is not great because as a lot of you know, they are doing all sorts of cuts around the resort and they're reducing the number of cast members in total for for Disney as a company. And right. not, I'm not saying the parks, but so they're they're trying to cut cut budgets and so with this being such a big potentially pricey potentially pricey thing to replace and i mean even the cleanup on it because you Mm. need to you need to you know get the area ready for the 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 replacement you know it's i feel like it's probably going to be a long road do i think this is the end no, I 100% do not think this is the end. Fantasmic will continue on. I do believe we will see Maleficent Dragon 3.0. Um, <laughs> to, yet to yet to earn its loving nickname. But I do believe we will see another dragon. I'm not... So I have mixed feelings on if she will breathe fire, if this was the last time we've seen her breathe fire or not. Mm. Depending on what the investigation finds, you know, there's different ways for them to do Which this effect. Yep. So perhaps they just maybe will she'll still breathe fire, but it just won't be as big. Because I mean, man, when she set the river on, that was a lot. That was a ton of fire. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was amazing. Well, it was so, as tall you know, as she was. Yeah, maybe you know. So maybe it won't look quite like that. Maybe they'll even go a completely different route and play it way safe and use like I was telling you about this. How they could maybe use like mist 
and like fog to come out of like have to make, make it look fire like make, make it yeah have a, a, a fireless fire effect if sure. that makes sense still make it appear that she's breathing fire while she actually isn't i feel like technologies come a long way so they could make that pretty you know look pretty well who knows but the other the other part of me too is saying you know we've had fire effects for well since the beginning of phantasmic for sure if not before then and they've been going off multiple times a day worldwide and this was one the of the time, first major major one we yeah. did of course have the the issue where the dragon from the parade in walt disney world did also catch fire and to me that was a more dangerous situation yeah. because that's in the middle of a parade with guests you right know, there right right there where thankfully murphy was Quite a ways away from guests. A rivers of America a, away. Yes, a river, a river away from guests. But still, this, I mean, this fire was much, much larger. So I don't know. I'm curious to see what they do. I, it, she'll be back. 100% she'll be back. But if they do, if they do fire effects with the, whatever they replace her with, I would hope that they would. And we talked about this before the show too, was I, I would hope that they would have more, Fire suppression either built into the animatronic or have a Disney fire barge or something on standby during the show I, that could show up a little faster. You know, and because I'm, there was reports of like cast members going out with like a garden hose, which I think you were right. I think they were trying to keep the I think stage. They were, I think they were trying to keep the stage wet. Yeah. To try. So by no means, no means am I any sort of expert on this. The thing that or have any inside in, knowledge. Yeah, or have any inside knowledge. The thing though that's crazy to me, and I feel like. It had to have like there's no way that the Disney gods were on our side this much during this terrible, terrible incident. But the fact that that there was so much fuel, like fuel that was supposed to be on Murphy to be able to produce the fire effect that just kept. I think that's what kept kept the fire going for so long was all of this fuel being sure. burned up. But when you look the the lift that she's on, there's a gap between Murphy and where the stage is. So I think. That may be intentional. I think that they did kind of have some things in place so that if something like this were to happen, it would stay contained. Because that's the thing that's incredible to me. You're in Southern California. You have all of this wood. There are trees. There's all of these things, you know, that very easily could have caught fire and somehow didn't didn't. That's amazing to me. So I feel like that that had to have been by design. I feel like luck could not have been on our side that much. I really hope that when Disney completes their investigation and they release whatever report that they're going to release to the public, I hope that they talk, if there are systems like that, I hope that they talk about it. Like, yeah. hey, our fire suppression system worked. It, it you know, was contained to the animatronic, mm -hmm. which was the design or whatever, and it looked worse than it was yeah. from a safety standard sure. let's say because obviously it was bad the animatronic is yeah i physical. would i would have to say would have to believe that it's a total loss yeah i would think so because i can't imagine that they would be like oh the main skeleton works fine let's just put a new wrap on it and it's all good to go because when you get things like heat and stuff like that i think it becomes difficult mm -hmm. but anyway so i would i would hope that disney would dispel any concern by releasing information I, like yeah that. i hope that they're more transparent on this and kind of kind of help people understand what happened better because a lot of times incidents like this they kind of just have a i don't want to say like oh nothing to see here nothing it's not there quite was an that incident bad, we responded but it's, it's done yeah yeah they're very brief so i hope that with this well one, this was so public yeah i hope with this one that they're a little bit more transparent and in the details of of what happened and what the plan is, you know, what the plan is going forward and, Ten and whatnot. 10,000 people can sit in that auditorium space and watch the Do show. So know, imagine 10,000 people plus all the people the, who videoed it and put it on the internet. The so thing that I think that is amazing about this is what if this were have to happen for the first showing of Fantastic? Oh my goodness. You know, what if it would have been the, the 9 o'clock show instead of the 1030 show? Oh, you're saying that night, not yeah. like the first show ever. No, no. If it would have, if this incident would have happened at the night, the first showing of Fantastic. They might have that closed evening. that half of the park early. Yeah, I don't know what they would have done. Because there's also been reports that people were in the park, not on the, on that side of the park and did not know didn't know that, well, that how this was you? going yeah. on. Yeah. Well, even like people were on Main Street and they're like, we didn't notice like a mass exiting of people or, you know, a I mass did, influx. Of I will people. I thought say, that was really interesting. From the videos, I was surprised because usually when something unexpected and catastrophic like this happens, I feel like people's 
default state is to like panic and run like mm -hmm. that's built into us as humans like that survival fight or flight and i feel like from the videos i saw that people were generally calm cast members were like go this way yeah. and people just seem to move and i was really impressed that there wasn't a panic or like a stampede or whatever that's true i want to say in the beginning though when it first started on fire i think like people were confused because like it seemed like something was wrong, but there was there was no indication of like how wrong it was yeah, no. until fire started falling Suddenly everywhere. It was very wrong. Yeah, and yeah. then everybody was like, "Oh!" But I think the fact that there was that water barrier, mm -hmm. I think, calmed a lot of people. Yeah. Like, it's not going to get over to us. Yeah. So you know, very, I'm, very, I'm very really tragic. interested. And if they, if slash when they do release it, we'll obviously report on it on the show mm -hmm. and let you guys know the the results of that. But. um it's a sad, sad day for Fantasmic very, and for Murphy. Yes, and yes. I just feel so bad. And I just I just think of all the people that that worked on her and oh, yeah. that, you know, had different relationships with her than what we had and much closer relationships with her. I just think about all those people and, you know, how those folks are feeling. You know, think about the people that created her, that designed her, that mm -hmm. got to work with her, at, you know every night you know all the i just think about those people and you know how they're probably feeling about this as well i have to imagine working on the show as a cast member i mean i have to imagine that they thought of her as a cast member I, for yeah, the show yeah, you know a so. member of the mm -hmm. show and so i have to think like there's a video that shows mickey mouse on stage when this happens and there's a moment where mickey is just looking up at murphy and just is kind of like obviously there's not a lot of facial expression but just you kind of has the body language the, like, of like what is happening yeah. like a kind of a shock the, like what yeah. yeah yeah so as always cast members show that they're professional and they rose to the challenge mm -hmm. and got everybody safely mm -hmm. out of there and nobody was seriously injured and um, i think that's the the best we could hope for in a unfortunate situation yes. like this yes definitely hopefully we can move on and hopefully pictures of the internet i won't constantly be seeing burning murphy yeah. pictures because i'm just kind of it's tired still, of seeing it it's still fresh so it's it is. still it's still very much out there so did you ever think we would report on anything even no. close to this no yeah no. Me either i to be honest when i when news first broke i was oh like, like Oh, it's just this little thing. And then I watched the video and I, it was, I just couldn't, I couldn't even blink. I was just so like. It's hard to process. Awestruck. And I, I watched, I watched the video multiple times. That's how in, like much in disbelief I was that this was real and that this happened. It was just. It still kind of doesn't feel real, no, does it? Like it we're doesn't. talking about it, but it's like, oh, this can't it's gonna be a hit, thing. I think it's going to hit really, really. When we're there. Odd when we're there. Yeah. And we 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 see the you know we're we're at the scene and we see the the aftermath especially if they still have the tarps the up. tarps still up yeah yeah no just it's very tough it's a sad time right now and who knows maybe maybe like Thompson said this lends the way for a more well advanced I mean just just think about it because she she was over ten years old so you know technology has advanced especially something a so lot big. yeah since then so I mean look at some of the newer animatronics that have come out That's in true. that time so the shaman who knows and, what the yeah. what the next version could look like but yeah. i um, there's always going to be a special place in my heart for murphy yep rest in peace murphy we we all loved you it's okay i'll be the only weekly tear without an answer make sure you send your questions to producer james or producer Vern at trivia at doweekly.net all right, hello and welcome back to Trivia Land. This is the hard to follow that sad eulogy. But anyway, Poor Murphy. we we have answers to questions. Let's get there. So the first question I asked this week, there's a tree in Avengers Campus that if it's lucky to gain superpowers, it'll share an origin story with a superhero. Who? You both answered the Hulk, and that is absolutely correct. Woo! Woo! Good job, Teresa. Good job, Tig. For those unfamiliar across from Web Slingers, there's a tall tree between two others. It's a bit greener and has some gamma radiation leaking onto it. Such a good detail. It was pretty cute. Our second clue is the audio clue. You both right on. You knew pirates right when you heard it. Doesn't surprise me one bit. Good job. Woohoo! Not phantasmic. <laughs> <laughs> not fantastic the third question what attraction can you find a parody of the Mona Lisa no you donkeys you are incorrect 
It was did Pinoc- you just did you just Gordon Ramsay us? Because it's in Pinocchio's daring journey in a pile of loot on Pleasure Island. Oh, oh. I'm curious. I don't think I ever knew that. This sound it mm, now. Now this does not answer my. There's there was something hidden in Goofy's house. I couldn't remember what it was. Hmm. I'm gonna have to to research and see. Maybe I made that up. So yes, I relevantly Gordon Ramsay do well. Thank you. I suppose. Our final question this week was, name the fortune tellers in Disneyland Park. I know them well because they interact well with the Disney Play app. They do. we know I'm a big fan of. There are only two of them in the park. There is Esmeralda in the Penny Arcade on Main Street. And the pirate you're thinking of near Pieces of Eight in New Orleans Square is Fortune Red. Oh, We should have known that. I was thinking that, like, no, 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 that's the name of the female pirate. The, you're getting your you're getting your, your thought streams crossed here. Yep. No. But nope, they are consistent on that one. There's something with the, there is a, we got to check out the lamp in the, in the Adventureland Bazaar, because there is a lamp. I don't remember what it does, though. Hmm. It is not a fortune teller. No, nope, not a fortune teller, but it, it's some sort of interactive thing. Be fun for us to explore as we move on in the future. So we're off next week for Trivia Land, which means plenty of time for you listeners to come up with some ideas for us to share on future podcasts. Send producer Vern and I your questions. It's trivia at dlweekly.net. Well, we will be back live next week from Disneyland with some more uh, Disneyland information. Until then, go out and enjoy the parks. Because we will. Please remain seated until the podcast comes to a complete stop and the doors have opened. Then collect your belongings, watch your head, and step carefully from the episode. On behalf of all of our crew, thanks for traveling with us. And we hope you have a happy and memorable visit here at DL Weekly.